August 18th. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6.12 Let us inquire, what is that which Satan desires to assault? It is the work of God in the soul. Against his own kingdom, not a weapon is raised. It is his aim and his policy to keep all there undisturbed and peaceful. But against the work of the Holy Spirit in the renewed mind, his artillery is brought to bear. Not a part of this work escapes him. Every grace comes in for its share of malignant attack, but especially the grace of faith. When, for example, a repentant and believing soul approaches Christ with lowliness and hesitancy, and with a tremendous hand of faith attempts to touch the border of his garment, or with a tearful eye looks up to his cross, then comes the assault upon faith in the forms of a suggestive doubt of Christ's power and willingness to save. Is Jesus able to save me? Has he the power to rescue my soul from hell? Can he blot out my transgressions and redeem my life from destruction? Will he receive a sinner so vile, so unworthy, so poor as I? Has he compassion? Has he love? Has he mercy sufficient to meet my case? In this way, Satan assails the earliest and the feeblest exercises of faith in the soul. Does this page address itself to any such? It is Satan's great effort to keep you from Jesus. By holding up to your view a false picture of his character, for which every loving, winning, inviting, and attractive is excluded. By suggesting wrong views of his work, in which everything gloomy, contracted, and repulsive is foisted upon the mind. By sailing the atonement, questioning the compassion, and limiting the grace of Christ, he would persuade you that in that heart which bled on Calvary, there is no room for you that upon that work which received the Father's seal, there is not breath sufficient for you to stand. All his endeavors are directed, and all his assaults are shaped with a view to keep your soul back from Christ. It is thus he seeks to vent his wrath upon the Savior and his malignity upon you. Nor does he less assail the more matured faith of the believer, not infrequently the sharpest attacks and the fiercest onsets are made and made successfully upon the strongest believers. Seizing upon powerful corruptions, taking advantage of dark providences and sometimes of bright ones, and never allowing any position of influence, any usefulness, gift, or grace that would give force, success, and brilliance to his exploits. To escape his notice, he is perpetually on the alert to sift and winnow God's precious wheat. His implacable hatred of God, the deep revenge he cherishes against Jesus, his malignant opposition to the Holy Spirit, fit him for any dark design and work implicating the holiness and happiness of the believer. Therefore, we find that the histories of the most eminent saints of God as written by the faithful pen of the Holy Spirit, are histories of the severest temptations of faith, in the most of which there was a temporary triumph of the enemy, the giant oak bending before the storm. And even in instances where there was no defeat of faith, there was yet the sharp trial of faith. The case of Joseph and that of his illustrious antitype, the Lord Jesus, present examples of this. Fearful was the assault upon the faith of both, sharp the conflict through which both passed, yet both left the battlefield victorious. But still faith was not the less really or severely sifted. <laughs>